All right. So thank you all for being on tonight. For those of you who don't know, this is the second month that um, Team Clearly Essential has held this um, online um, internet-based monthly education class. And that's really because we wanted to provide the ability for those people who aren't able to make it to one of our actual live locations. Um, they, we wanted them to have the ability to also get training and education. And so Crystal set all this up and um, she's really a fantastic leader and um, gave us this kind of platform to be able to share all this information between each other. So she did a little brief um, overview last month and this month I've been given the really amazing honor of speaking on the use of essential oils on children and babies and infants. And um, we always know there's a possibility with technology that things might get a little hairy. If they do, please just bear with us. Um, and we'll just, um, hopefully it, it won't be an issue. Your bandwidth is really slow. Oh, great. Yay. I don't like hearing that. Okay. Um, what I'm hoping is that the recording is doing a better job than maybe um, is showing up here. What I'm going to do, let me step over and just make sure that my internet is up. So give me a two minute pause, listen to Jeopardy music. I'll be right back. Just make sure. Okay. Hopefully we'll be better. Hopefully. So, okay. Um, I'm going to get started. Yes, I appreciate you sending me a message, a little private message if there's an issue. Anyone, please do that because I otherwise don't know what's going on because everybody's muted so you can't yell at me. Um, so, I'm going to screen share, and we're going to start our information. Bear with me, please. All right. Let's go back to the first slide. Okay. So, we are, can everybody, um, Colleen, give me another thumbs up if you can see the PowerPoint. Is that what you see on your screen? Good. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, you're going to be my go-to because you're right there straight in front of my screen. So, lucky you. It's like you're in the front row at school. Um, so, we're going to be talking about essential oils for infants, babies, and children. And um, I always think it's at least moderately relevant to give a little background information as to why do I have any authority to be speaking on this or having you guys listen to me. Um, I've been a doTERRA wellness advocate since um, 2013. Yeah, 2013. Yep. Uh, so three years. And um, I am on Crystal's team. And I am also a doctor of chiropractic. And so I am pretty well versed in alternative medicine. And so essential oils have been something that I've known about and had an idea about for a while, even before using doTERRA. And um, I felt pretty naturally uh, fell into the groove of things when I started using doTERRA because it just felt really natural to the culture that I was already a part of. And I happen to uh, specialize in pregnancy and pediatrics in my office. 
And so I work a lot with kids and I have three kids of my own. I use essential oils on them. And so one of the things that for anybody, I think, to be considered a quote unquote expert, you just have to use them. You have to use them in the capacity that you're talking to people about and that's what I do. So none of those other things matter. All the credentials in the world don't matter. You're an expert if you do what you're talking about. You have that in your, in your life and you can speak on that. And that's something that's definitely accurate. I use a lot of oils on my kids. I suggest a lot of oils in my practice. And so um, there you go. Do the same in your life and you will be an expert in whatever you want to speak about. So, all right. It says my internet connection is a little low, so I apologize to anyone that's getting kind of back and forth. Hopefully it'll pick back up again. Um, okay, so this chart is basically speaking on um, how it's appropriate to use oils on children versus adults. So basically when you look at this chart, it talks about that um, aromatic use is really safe in any capacity with your kids. There's no ideal amount. There's no maximum to be used in a 24 hour period. It's the same with adults. It's the same with children. When you're learning about the science of essential oils, one of the things that we learn about um, really quickly off the bat is that aromatic use is really safe across the board. There's not a lot of um, reasons to not use oils aromatically. There's not a lot of contraindications. When you're using the oils internally, um, there is more um, uh, suggestion on being a little more conservative. So it talks about here that an ideal amount in any given time with internal usage is two to four drops for an adult and one to two for a child. And then within a 24 hour period, you really don't want to exceed 24 drops for an adult and 12 for a child. So really quite a bit lower dosage. Um, oral just means you're literally putting the oils into your mouth and it really suggests we don't do that with children, um, just using the oils in that capacity. And then when it talks about dermal, that's what we know as topical usage. Three to six drops when you're um, talking about a adult and then one to two when you're talking about a child. That same thing of not exceeding about 12 drops with a child. Now I will tell you, lots of people have different experiences. They use oils in different ways. Um, and I um, want to encourage everybody to figure out that when they are using oils, especially on their own family, go more conservative. And if you notice no adverse effects, you could try more. Um, this was actually taken straight off of doTERRA, um, their blog. So this may seem overly conservative to you, but this is the suggestions that doTERRA really has for us. So this is a good guideline, if nothing else. Um, so that is the suggested usage of oils. So really the take home point of this is that when we're looking at using essential oils on children, we wanna be more conservative, we want to dilute heavily, and we want to know that less is more. And so our first instinct shouldn't be, we want to throw a bunch of oils at them, and we want to use a whole lot. We really want to start off slowly, use only a select few oils, and really heavily dilute. And then if we don't notice any adverse effects, we can get a little bit more liberal with our use of the oils. Okay, so if any of you guys have ever been at any of the other education um, classes or any of the big education days, one thing you know is that we seem to really, really, really talk about and bring home all the time on the importance of the supplementation that doTERRA has. And the reason for that is, is that we know if you have a healthy foundation, then your body is going to much easier use the oils in a better capacity. You're going to need less oils. Um, you're going to have less issues. It's, your body's going to work more effectively. And the true, the same thing is true for children. And so what we know is that the foundation of a healthy body is through healthy nutrition. And we can work as hard as we, we possibly can at having the best possible nutrition and the healthiest diet. And we still know based on 
are well, a lot of things our soil our farming unfortunately we just aren't able to have perfect nutrition and so supplementation is really it's essential for everyone um it doesn't matter how clean you're eating how organic you're eating how healthy you're eating in the united states you need supplementation because we just aren't getting it from our food sources so for kids doTERRA has two products that they have um specifically re released just for children the iq mega which is an omega-3 fish oil and the a to z chewables which are basically a multivitamin a daily multivitamin now some kids hate them they don't like them at all my kids they literally beg for them all the time they say they're like candy they they can't go without them so the a to z chewables are amazing in our family and the iq mega really doesn't have that fishy taste to it um it does have an oil consistency so if that's something that your kids aren't really fond of then you might find that they don't love taking it just straight but my boys will literally take it in a spoon without anything before or after or having to put it in anything if you're having an issue with your kids not really wanting to take the iq mega they don't love the taste of it put a little in some orange juice or um, some people have said to give a little honey afterwards whatever um, you can pretty easily uh, get this into your kiddos because it's just a liquid form it's not a pill that they have to swallow and the chewable is just what it says a chewable so the a to z chewable for those of you who aren't familiar with it 100 percent of daily value of your 10 vitamins as well as eight minerals also um, the super the superfood bend alpha crs and for those of you who don't know what alpha crs is that's part of the lifelong vitality pack that we take as adults and that's like your antioxidant blend so the kids are getting that too it's really awesome um, there's less sugar than most common multivitamin gummies in the a to z chewables that's a great positive as well they're getting enough sugar they don't need more as far as the iq mega um, this is a fish oil but it doesn't have that fishy taste and if you're familiar with what fish oils do, you can read through this whole slide. The fish oils are amazing for brain development. They're also really good for immune support, for joint function, for in adults are really great for maintaining a healthy cholesterol. What you're gonna find is that if you're taking a omega-3 on a regular basis, you're having less problems with your immune system. Also a lot of, um, a lot of folks that I know who use the doTERRA IQ Mega find that their children are able to better concentrate when they're taking a high dose of the IQ Mega. That goes along with that brain function and um, basically just neurological support. So keep that in mind if you're trying a lot of the different oils for concentration or um, problems with maybe some hyperactivity or something like that, and you're just not getting quite the results that you want, maybe try going on a high dose of the IQ Mega. Um, and this goes through a little bit more detail about what that IQ Mega does, your healthy skin, your healthy immune function, proper lipid um, um, function. Um, it talks about the ratio of the 600 EPA to 400 DHA. That's a ideal ratio. Um, they also have wild orange essential oil in the um, IQ Mega. And then when you pair that with the A to Z chewable, it's just really getting kids full comprehension of what they need dietarily. So I talk about that a lot of times people say, I'm already using a vitamin, I'm already using whatever for my kiddos. I really challenge you to look at that and make sure that you're using the highest quality because these really are a superior um, supplementation for your kids, much like the LLV is for us as adults. Um, or let's go ahead and dive into actual oils because I know that a lot of you want to know, okay, what are some of the staples that I need to be using on my kiddos? Now, this is kind of a given. Probably most of you are using On Guard on your kids or your grandkids or whatever it might be. Um, and you know that On Guard is a really fantastic uh, blend for immune support, right? So um, one of the things that we do, we, we homeschool our oldest, our other two aren't old enough to be traditionally homeschooled, but um, that's funny, traditionally homeschooled. Um, but we are in our house a lot, and what we do during the winter in order to combat all of those uh, different um, threats, immune threats, is we are consistently and constantly um, diffusing on guard. It smells awesome in our house, always smells like cinnamon and wild orange because we've got on guard going all the time. We know that it's protecting us against those airborne pathogens. Um, we also use it in our laundry detergent. We also use the toothpaste. 
My kids love the toothpaste. Um, I have to actually put it up because they'll try and eat it. So um, not that I worry about that because there's no fluoride in the toothpaste. So that's good too. So if you know um, much about toothpaste, this is kind of one of those subjects that there's a lot of different opinions on it. But really your kiddos shouldn't be eating or shouldn't be getting a fluoride toothpaste, even though you think, well, I take them to the dentist and they want to give them a fluoride treatment. Well, you're not supposed to swallow fluoride. That's a really big deal. And almost everything you put in a child's mouth, they're going to swallow. I mean, I found Lego heads in my kids' diapers. They're going to eat anything you put into their mouth. So um, when you say, I'm going, to put, I'm going to have them use toothpaste that has fluoride in it, but I'm going to tell them, oh, spit it out. Yeah, they're not going to do that. So it's really great that On Guard doesn't have fluoride, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and one of the things that we also do is, especially during the winter months when seasonal threat, or not seasonal, pathogen threats are higher, we put On Guard into the diffuser that we put in our kiddos' room. So On Guard is a must. You can also use it topically, put it on the bottom of their feet. That's another thing that I do. We, um, like I said, we don't do um, traditional school. So um, we don't have big issues with um, them being in a big classroom with lots of snotty kiddos everywhere. But we do several different activities during the week where they are around large crowds of people, large crowds of kids um, in a classroom type setting. And so one of the things we do is we put on guard on the bottom of their feet before they go into that setting so that their body is just functioning at its highest level. All right. So a lot of kids have issues with earaches, right? For whatever reason, whatever the, the reasoning is that their ears are bothering them, they're hurting, um, there's a lot of them, which I'm sure that you guys can list off in your mind, many different reasons why kids have ear aches and the issue that may be behind that. Um, and so melaleuca, lavender, and basil are three really great oils to just have on hand for when they start complaining, my ears should bother me. The really great thing about essential oils that most of you probably already know is that um, if your kid says, my ear's bothering me, and there's not actually anything going on with their ear. It just, I don't know, they, for whatever reason, they said it was hurting them, but nothing's actually wrong with it. You're not gonna hurt anything by using the oils on them, right? So it's not like you go to your doc and I don't know, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say you, they give you a prescription, but, and you take it, but you didn't need it, right? Oh, there wasn't actually anything wrong. And I just took that. Um, you don't have that concern with oils because if there's, not something actually wrong or going on, quote unquote, um, the oils aren't gonna hurt that. They're not gonna throw off their body. So melaleuca is um, uh, very good, strong, I, I think I can say anti-pathogen, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, lavender is very calming. And uh, basil has a really, amazing ability to help with pain reduction. Um, and so I've actually had an earache in the past. It was caused by a tooth and I applied basil to around my ear and then down my jawline. And I was amazed at how quickly my pain reduced um, by just using basil alone. That was it. So basil is really good for that. Um, lavender, I'm sure all of you already know this, has a tremendous amount of benefits. Um, it's fantastic for calming and soothing. It's got great emotional support benefits. It's one of the most important oils to have on hand from almost a first aid standpoint, for lack of a better term, um, for cuts and scrapes and wounds and burns and all that kind of stuff. Oh, lavender's great for all of those. Um, also one of my go-tos that I tell almost anybody who's having issues with sleep with their kids, I say, try lavender, try that first, very calming. Um, and then it's also really good for if your kids have any kind of stings or bug bites or anything like that with helping not only with itch, it's good for itch, but it's also good for calming if there's a sting. Um, also a really great oil or if your kids ever get stung by a bee or a yellow jacket or any of those types of things, lemon. Lemon oil is really great to put right on the site. Um, that helps with kind of the toxicity that's coming from their stinger, the poison, I guess, for lack of a better term. 
Lemon's great for that, so keep that in mind as well. Um, next picture, I always like to warn people just in case you're a little squeamish. Um, I'm going to show you, probably a lot of you have already seen this before, I'm going to show you the picture of a burn that was had lavender put on her. So um, you can see here this woman had a burn, a third degree burn, she spilled boiling water on her. And then um, lavender and melaleuca daily, and this was, I, I'm stuck, my um, slide is actually hidden behind, so you guys can all see the number really clearly, and I can't, but I, I think it's five days, five days of applying the um, lavender and melaleuca. And look how great her leg looks. I mean, there's, you can definitely see the area where she had the burn, but man, it was five days, that's it. Um, you see her pink, fresh, new skin and the healing that's happening, which is great. So, really cool. Um, Breathe is another oil that I have on hand with On Guard all the time when we're looking at um, the change of seasons and our bodies are under more stress. And so Breathe is huge for respiratory support. It's one of the best oils for respiratory support. And really that's what, I mean, it's the respiratory blend. That's what it was really made for. Um, you can apply it to your chest. It helps to open your airwaves. Um, and it also is uh, really great for any kind of seasonal respiratory issues. Um, and it's also good for kiddos who may have um, issues with breathing that may be induced by um, exercise or things like that. So um, I know that a lot of people get a little bit nervous about um, peppermint and eucalyptus when they're talking about kids. And both there is both peppermint and eucalyptus in brief. Um, but I guess I would tell you that if you are, are nervous about that, do a little bit more research about um, the specific um, species of peppermint and eucalyptus that has been shown to maybe be a little concerning and then the one that doTERRA uses. Because there's a difference. For those of you who don't know quite all the intricacies of the science behind oils, um, plants have different species. Uh, it's pretty easy to understand if you think about like basil, right? So we all know when you're cooking, there's like sweet basil and there's Thai basil and there's different kinds of basil. Those are all different species of basil. They're all basil, but they're different kinds. And we use the fancy little kitchen cooking names like sweet basil and Thai basil, but there's the, um, the scientific names that are used when you're actually labeling what type of basil, for instance, it is. The same thing is true for peppermint. Um, there's different species um, of peppermint, there's different species of eucalyptus, there's different species of frankincense, um, based on where they grow and how they grow and what season they grow in and all those types of things. And oftentimes when we're talking about a plant that has an adverse reaction that isn't otherwise toxic, we're either talking about two things, specific species that's found to, to be um, more dangerous, which doTERRA takes that into consideration, and they do not use um, species that have been shown to be more dangerous. And then they also are talking about often misusing. So when we're using essential oils with kids, and we're talking about something like peppermint or eucalyptus, regardless of what species we're talking about, you don't need a lot. And if you're using, you know, two or three undiluted drops straight on the skin without any kind of carrier or dilution, that might be fine for an older child, maybe. I mean, you st I'm not saying it is, but it may be. But if you're talking about a six-week-old, week, six week it's too much. It's just too much. You don't need that. It's not necessary. So heavily diluting your oils can really help not only they go a lot a, long, a lot longer, they go a lot farther, but also that takes out that um, concern or that fear, oh, is this gonna have an adverse reaction? When you're heavily diluted, you still get a lot of great therapeutic benefit and um, you take some of that concern out. We kind of live in a culture where we think that um, more is more and really when it comes to natural and alternative medicine um, or just natural and alternative health benefits, health care, really the whole saying of less is more is really true. And it's definitely true for oils and kids as well. Less is more. So be more conservative.
Uh, Digest then is fantastic for all kinds of digestive support from constipation to diarrhea to gas and bloating, um, GERD issues, things like that. They're all really fantastic and, and addressed really well by using Digestin. And um, Digestin can be diluted and then rubbed on the belly. Um, and it could be, they, they have Digestin um, capsules for those of you soft gels. If your kiddo is old enough to swallow a pill, they can take that, a Digestin soft gel. Um, and then if you have a child who has chronic digestive issues, then maybe putting Digestin on the bottom of their feet can just help balance and support their digestive system a little bit better. So I always use Digestin on my belly when I'm having issues with like gas or bloating or something like that. And I notice that it really resolves those issues quite quickly. And so that is a, a great oil to reach for if you have a kiddo who talks a lot about, I have a tummy ache, tummy ache, tummy ache, Digestin. Um, the other really great thing about that is, is that we all know that sometimes, now none of our kids would ever do this, but sometimes kids will say they have a tummy ache when they don't really, because they just kind of want to get out of something. And it, we go back to that whole principle of um, even if they don't have a tummy ache, putting a little digestin on their belly and tell them it should feel better now, doesn't hurt anything, right? It just helps their digestive system function even better. So sometimes my sons will say, mommy, my belly hurts. So I'll say, well, let's put a little digestin on it. It'll make it feel all better. And then I put it on. It's, it feels all better now, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, did they have a tummy ache? I don't know, but apparently they felt better after digestion. So, all right. Okay. These are great oils for mood, um, stabilizing, mood balancing, and they're all really gentle, safe, effective oils. So, um, some just light dilution, and these are great oils to use with your kiddos. I like to use um, like Serenity or Balance. If we're talking about a younger child, I don't mind using those. Serenity can be another one that's really good for sleep. It's very calming. But some of these, if you're using them in combination, they might be something that you're considering using on your older kiddos to help with mood stabilization or mood balance issues. And you can do that. Sometimes we have a child who may be a little aggressive or maybe a little more emotional than we, we think is um, – I don't mean norm. I don't want to say normal, but I, I'm not. I'm kind of blanking on what other term to use. But maybe they're maybe a little bit on the more emotional side, and we just think that balancing that might be a little bit more helpful for them. And so these emotion oils are really great to do that, and very safe, um, very mild, but have a really big impact on our body. So reaching for any of these are great. They're great. Um, so I would definitely suggest trying these, especially if you're wanting to do kind of combinations of things. They're great to use on older kiddos. Um, maybe one at a time on your, your young babies or, or small children, but if we're talking um, in the teenage years, these are fantastic. Try some combinations. I get all the time my child doesn't concentrate or my child's hyper. And Intune is great for that. It's specifically made for um, focus and attention. It's got patchouli in it. Um, it's got vetiver in it. Um, it's really just fantastic for um, all kinds of focus and attention issues. Here's a problem I hear all the time. This is like the number one thing that I hear about Intune. Um, my kids hate the way it smells. Well, I can't blame them. I don't like the way the patchouli smells either. But so then they say, well, what am I, what are we supposed to do? Because my kid doesn't want to wear it at school because they're going to get teased about how they smell or whatever it might be. And there's a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is put it on the bottom of their feet and put socks on. And they're probably going to notice that that's really helpful because you don't need to be like slathering the bottom of their feet with Intune, okay? One little strip right up the bottom of their foot and then rub their feet together. You don't even have to do a second strip up the other one. And then you put some socks on and you'll probably notice that once you put the socks on and the shoes on, you don't even smell the Intune. But if they still are, oh no, they just really don't like it. They still can smell it. They're really self-conscious about it. Well, let's talk about some alternatives then because it's not 
in the world of essential oils, you don't have one shot, and if it doesn't work, you, you're out of luck. No, there's a lot of options. So here's some other um, ideas about oil, specifically for focus and attention. Um, peppermint, right, might be a good focuser. Um, kind of peps them up and whoo, focus. Um, vetiver can be really great for focus and attention when used by itself. We already talked about that's in in tune, but when used by itself, it's great for focus and attention. The problem can be, and you're gonna have to do some trial and error with these things, the problem can be with vetiver, sometimes it makes kids, or anybody who uses it, really sleepy. And we don't want that if they're trying to go to school to focus and then they're sleepy because they had vetiver, right? So try out maybe, um, I don't know, on a day that we're not necessarily going to school, maybe we're, um, sorry, fly. Um, maybe we're doing focus and attention work at home, like maybe homework, something like that. Um, I saw on a blog post, uh, someone who mentioned motivate and passion. Those two can be really great for focus and attention. So trying out motivate and passion might be a good idea. Um, wild orange is always a really great for, um, kind of neurological support, balance, health. So trying that out might be a great idea. And then, um, for those of you who know um, Drew and Lacey, I actually saw Drew today, and I got to give him credit for this because it's not me whatsoever. Um, but he had mentioned that he'd read on um, one of the blogs or articles or websites that um, Mito 2 Max has some benefit if your child will swallow a pill. And um, that, from a physiology standpoint, actually makes perfect sense. And um, I think that that could be really beneficial, especially if you're talking about a child who's not just a little unfocused or kind of like doesn't pay attention, but really truly maybe has some diagnosable focus issues. I think that Mino 2 Max would be really helpful. So trying that out might be a good idea as well. Um, peaceful child. This is this oil blend is my jam because this helps my kiddos sleep. So I like to put this up. It also can be really good for attention, focus, um, but for in our family, it helps for calming down and sleeping. Um, I use it on my kiddos, but also my mom uses it. So it's not only for children, but it works really well on children. Um, so peaceful child, this is a great blend. And then sleepy time, lavender, vetiver, cedarwood, serenity, and peace are all fantastic oils to reach for when you're trying to affect your kiddo's sleep time. I always tell people, go with the most simple thing first. So lavender is very simple, and it works for a lot of people. Um, if you find that it helps, but it's not really doing what you want it to do, go to the next one. Um, for kids, I would not suggest mixing a whole lot of oils together to help them sleep. I would say do one, try a different one, maybe try two at a time, but especially if we're talking about infants, I wouldn't mix a ton of oils together. Not that it's going to be hurtful, I just don't think it's necessary. If the problem with sleep is something that's going to be affected by essential oils, I think that you're going to notice pretty quickly. And I think you're going to notice with relative simplicity that it's helpful. If you find that you're having to do an overabundance of different oils and mixtures and tons of them and putting them all together and you're doing concoctions and witches brews in your kitchen, I'm kidding with that metaphorically, um, you probably are not having a true sleep issue that is going to have a huge impact with essential oils alone. Um, maybe your kid's going through a growth spurt or um, they're just needing to eat more often or it might be something else altogether. So keep that in mind. And then the thing that is just absolutely phenomenal and really, really easy is getting your hands on a touch kit. Um, the touch kit is a pretty good price when you take into consideration that you're getting all of those oils and they're already pre-made, pre diluted, and you get the roller balls. 
Um, and so the thing that I absolutely love about the touch kit is the ease of just putting them in my purse and having them at all times. And really, we all know if you're already using essential oils, almost everything that you could have a concern with um, that needs to be um, dealt with at that exact moment can be addressed with one of these oils. So you have a really wide variety of oils in the touch kit. And I have heard, although I don't, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was even something that was spoken by leadership at convention last year, um, although I haven't necessarily seen anything come down the pike or be mentioned since, but I've heard that their long-term goal is to expand the touch line past these nine oils and take the other oils that doTERRA offers and do this similarity that's happened with the touch line and do the same thing. And for those of you who don't really know what this means, if you just simply think like, oh, they just took oils and they put them in a roller bottle. No, that's not what's happened. Um, what they've done is, um, for those of you who don't know, doTERRA has um, employed a substantially large amount of scientists who work for the company. And there's a variety of jobs that are based on testing and safety and efficacy that they do, but one of them that was their job when it came to the touch kit was, I, we'd like for you to take these nine oils and um, figure out the ratio of oil, essential oil, to carrier oil that is most effective and safest from infants up through the entire family. And so the basic premise of these nine essential oils is that these are diluted in such a ratio that they are safe to use on your newborn. So when we look at these oils, we are not just looking at oils that they threw into a roller bottle and well, who knows if are they, so are they safe to use on parents or are they safe to use on kids or they're safe to use on everyone. Um, so the touch line is really great if you're just not quite sure how do I dilute? How much should I dilute? Um, you know, am I using the right amount? All that kind of stuff. Then maybe the touch line is where you start when it comes to using oils on your kit. So I think, yes, I think that was the end. Yes, it is the end of that. So hold on, bear with me for half a second here. What we're going to do, let me find my controller. We're going to stop screen sharing. Okay, at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, Press and stop record. Oh, I've got eight chats here. Uh oh. <laughs>